Hi guys, Scuffy Spurs okay, here, back with another video today. My match reaction to that crazy game, not the you know, result we wanted, 4-1 loss to Chelsea, be diving everything into it, looking at decisions, and just decisions play a really high line uh, with nine men, etc. And we, like I said, reviewed the decisions and all the goals as well that took place in the game, because there's a lot to get through. But before we crack into it very quickly, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, because it's free to do so and it does help the channel grow. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, leave a like and turn on notifications bell on, get involved in the comments throughout today's video. Uh, get back to you as soon as possible. That'd be massively appreciated. So let's crack into it because we had a you know, really good start. 1-0 up inside six minutes from Dijan Kulisevsky. Great move. Chelsea were there for the taking. Not to be funny, especially Sanchez and their defence looked really, really vulnerable. Uh, we got the second goal, which was meant to be just disallowed. And from then, it all went wrong with arguably one of our best, if not our best player so far this season in Mickey van der Ven. Pulling up with a with a what appears to be a serious injury, probably hamstring, is what it looked like for for, for, for me, and it's lots of other people. So that doesn't look good because obviously the way we play the attacking football, expansive, where we take risks, etc. And ball, if you like, uh, we rely on Van der Ven's pace at the back to be, to be able to to expand. So that was was a massive loss. Romero getting sent off and giving away a penalty. Honestly, I mean, I don't know what he's doing. Um, I don't know what he's doing there. For me, although I don't think it's a red card, I can see why it's given because of the follow-through. But at the same time, for me, it's a 50. He's gone in to a challenge that two players committed into, one slightly backed off and, and uh, Enzo Fernandez has come out worse. And uh, it's the follow through. So, but from Romero needed to calm down because he lashed out before that and could have been sent off before that. So really, really poor from what it, who is the vice captain. So really poor. Chelsea got the equaliser from the spot. So it made it difficult from then on. But I still strongly believe that with ten men we could have maybe beaten them, if not definitely got a point out of the game. Um, Doki gets the yellow card. <sighs> could have easily been a red card. Very, very dangerous. Could have really easily gone earlier. Uh, on a yellow card, he knew it when he went in the tank. You just don't make that attack on yellow card. So a rush of blood to both Romero and Odoki's head. And um, they both owe their teammates and the fans an apology because it's what cost us. Because Chelsea weren't great. They were the, you know, they were there for the taking. It took them ages to break down nine men. So somehow, although we've lost 4-1, it's more embarrassing for them that we had that, you know, we had to have nine men for them to to beat us. And it, even that took them so long. <laughs> what do I make of a of a you know kind of playing a high line, you know when when you're down to nine men? Personally, if I was a manager, it's not what I would do. But we've got to respect Andrew Postecoglou. He's, he's the manager. He knows what he's doing. He's fantastic, um, and we so we've got to get behind him. Um, but with with the nine men on the pitch, really really proud. Couldn't be prouder personally of, of their commitment, their effort until the end. And I think the fans appreciate that. But majority staying to the end. Uh, you know, even after every goal we conceded at the end, because we conceded a couple, two or three in added time for from Nicholas Jackson, for example. The clapping after because we appreciate that the boys put everything in, put their bodies on the line, etc. Uh, and really deserved more out of the game. So I couldn't be prouder with nine men. Um, really, really happy. So, you know, fans fans appreciated that. Stayed to the end, sung at the end. Uh, and obviously, the Ange, Ange and the players appreciated that post-match interviews and, and clap him. So, I come out of this game proud, but I know it's a missed opportunity. Um, I don't like to point fingers at players, but for me, the likes of Romero and Odoki need to take responsibility. But putting the result aside, I think... That referee and performance from Michael Oliver is by, first, by far, far the worst I've ever seen in terms of inconsistency. I don't know how the likes of Rhys James Sterling didn't go, didn't get sent off the diving from Sterling, for example. I just, I don't get it. I think Chelsea are allowed to get away with murder on the night. And that was really, really poor for Michael Oliver. And I think... You know, in the second half, when when Chelsea were the ones committing these fouls that the likes of Adoki and Romero got sent off for in the first half, that they, they bottled it and and was very reluctant to get his yellow cards out. Um, so for me, this should be another referee we see this weekend, um, either banned from officiating or, or dropped down to the Championship because we saw Anthony Taylor rightly so as well. Um, and you know we've discussed VAR a lot on the podcast on the channel. And I kind of say, if it's being used in this way, it's taken this long to reach either the wrong decision, etc. Um, it, it needs to be scrapped. I can, ex you know, respect the referee's decision. Um, and 
you know, Adoku's was was definitely definitely red. That that was rightly so given by the on-field referee. But I thought Mike Oliver personally had a real shocker. I don't like to say corruption, etc. But it it wasn't good. A um, couple of people I want to talk about coming coming off the bench. Um, one being Eric Dyer, the other being Pierre Hoy. But Eric Dyer in particular, you remember before last night, before Monday night, hadn't played a kick. Yeah, you know, hadn't kicked. They hadn't kicked a ball. Under Ange Postacoglu so far this season uh, in, in the 2023-24 Premier League campaign. Came on, uh, saved us in so many moments from playing Chelsea going in behind and scoring. Uh, and thought he got the equaliser, which would have been 2-2 in around about the 82nd um, minute. was narrowly disallowed um, for offside. I haven't seen it back, so I can't comment on it. But I do know it was, was very, very tight because I was there myself. Uh, and it, it was where we were, so it was very, very tight. Um, so, yeah, exceptional performance for him. And obviously, you know, we've got a large amount of injury suspensions now, so we're going to have to rely upon him. So hopefully we can see more performances like this. And with Hoiberg, whenever he's been asked upon, I think he's stepped up and delivered, Fulham, etc. Or whenever he's been needed, Palace in, in games, he has stepped up and delivered. Uh, done everything he's asked for, so couldn't be proud of him too. Couldn't be proud of proud of everyone in that team. I thought Vicario absolutely immense. What a signing, by the way. Uh, I love his passion. So annoyed when the players don't track back and made some exceptional saves. And for his performance, that deserved a clean sheet. Um, so it's such a shame for him. E- exceptional performance. There, there, there's no there's no doubt about that. Um, so massive, massive. Well done for him. Excellent piece of business. Um, yeah, worry going into the Wolves game because obviously we've got Van der Ven injured. I think that would be, I don't know how long it would be, but I definitely think it would be the rest of, rest of this year, if not longer. Romero suspended for three games, including Manchester City away, Aston Villa at home, and then Wolves at home this weekend. So that is that is worrying uh, without our two centre backs. But us fans knew this was going to happen. We've been calling for it. We knew we needed a third strong centre back in case one of them got injured or suspended. Co- coincidence they both happened together isn't it Van der Ven and a potential long term injury and Romero suspended for three games it happened both at once it just happens to top last but doesn't it so everything went wrong after that goal was the goal was disallowed but yeah I'm worried about our options obviously got a doki suspended for one game uh, misses the Wolves game which is which is worrying. So we're really short defensively. Madison as well came off injured. So it wasn't our night, but I want to continue to state I'm very proud of the boys. Officials aside, opposition aside, uh, we battled until the very end. It was a pleasure to witness that uh, myself. But we must move on. We must somehow, with the team we've got, find a way to beat Wolves, get back on track, because the unbeaten run was going to end at some point. And Chelsea often like to, to ruin that. So let Chelsea have their fun. We'll see who has the final laugh at the end of the season. So we must move on quickly. But I do hope you enjoyed today's video. A lot to digest. So longer than usual. Uh, so really, really proud of the boys. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Because lots of people saying, how can you be proud of a 4-1 loss, etc. But these players left 110% on the pitch with nine men. And that is all you can ask for if you ask me. But if you are new to the channel, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Uh, if you haven't already, check out the weekly live podcast every Monday at 8pm. Returning this Monday, uh, like I said, leave a like, get all the comments. Uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But as we were say on this channel, come on you Spurs.